Hello guys, this is the American Developer here. It's been a while since I've made a video and since then I've actually had some requests to actually use Selenium to interact with multiple windows. Uh, this video for now will focus on setting up the code to being able to open up multiple windows with different links. So the, to put this into a scenario Let's say that you have a Gmail account, and in this case I created a made-up Gmail account just so you can see what we can do with this. Uh, what I would like to do is be able to log into Gmail, then be able to find dynamic buttons because a lot of buttons on Gmail are difficult to find because there isn't a static um, attribute value set to the ID or the name attributes within an element. So I can show you how to use a dynamic approach to finding buttons and then from there grab all the Google app button hrefs or links so we're going to grab the length and then execute javascript with the um, hrefs extracted first off let's go ahead and save this and I'll save this as multi window dot pi root doing this in Python we will first need to import very important libraries that uh, we will use for selenium one being time because for now I'm going to focus more on the implicit weights instead of the explicit weights where you're trying to wait until you find an element on a page for now this will be a simple setup where we can set up a specific amount of seconds and let the page continue on. The next one will be from Selenium import web driver. I specifically want that from Selenium. I don't have to import everything from Selenium. And then from Selenium dot web driver dot common keys import keys. This will enable us to actually interact with the control, alt, shift, enter keys, all those sort of keys on the keyboard when interacting with websites. And of course we're going to create a class because we like organizing our code and this class will be named Google Products Automation and then within it we gotta have a sort of a constructor here which in this case in Python it is the init function and we're sending it to self and I'm gonna go ahead and get our web driver variable set up so then we can use it throughout our Google products automation class now the next part would be when it comes to these sort of tests we want to set it up in a test case structure and we always have a setup in a close part of a test case. We will start with a setup selenium function and then there let's set our driver to be web driver chrome. Now this will work if chrome driver is located within the same directory. Make sure that's clear. Otherwise you'll need to provide a, a directory of where your Chrome driver is located. But since mine's located in the same place as my script, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. Uh, let's go to, where is it? So if you go to YouTube here, you can see that my Chrome driver is right there and my script is right here. So in this case, this will work fine for me. And let's set up our close down function which will be simply 
clean up browser. And this is all you need to do to actually exit out of your driver. Now let's go ahead and work on our first test case, which is logging into Gmail. And let's call that login to Gmail. Of course, we're doing self because then we can reference the object later on. So it would reference this class. Then we can call the functions in there. And it requires self to be able to read it for class objects. So we'll start off with getting the get call, which will take us to a specific website, which in this case will be gmail.com. Well, it decided to go to Gmail as soon as I press enter. Interesting. And we're going to do more implicit waits here, just seven seconds. And we are going to look for our first element, which is email. Send keys. And this is what my test account is. Surprise, surprise, test dev. 012345.gmail.com and let's go ahead and look for the next one we'll find element by ID and we are going to call the submit function within that which will act as if I'm pressing the enter key when I'm typing it and we're gonna do another implicit way you know it Explicit, we're looking for an element, but this is much faster just for showing you how to do this. And as you know, on the Gmail website, when you're logging in, it first shows your email and then it shows your password. So next, we are going to look for a password. And let's send keys again. And this time, this will be our password. And then this will be exactly the same thing as entering your email, but you're just looking for a different um, attribute, which is ID in this case. And we're going to submit that again. And there you have it. That is our first test case to doing this. Now let's go ahead and start typing up our execute test so you can have things put into perspective to see how this is working. So I'm going to call this execute test. And let's do self dot setup selenium, which is what we'll call this. And then after that, we'll do self dot login to Gmail. And there that will actually log in to Gmail. Then after that, let's clean up. Now, to, in order to actually run this bit of code, what we'll need to do is set this up here. This is to make it cleaner. You could um, call the object directly, but this is mainly to make it cleaner. This is for people who are planning to do automation with this sort of testing. I personally like doing this more. Now this one will be referencing the class here. And taskmaster execute test. Let's set our comments where they're supposed to be. So log into Gmail. We still need to perform these tasks, so they're not ready yet. So we are going to execute our our uh, test to see if we log in successfully to Gmail. All right, so it took us to the Gmail login page. So this is executing our first test case, and it looks like it's entering my username. Now it should do my password. Now keep this in mind when you're running a Selenium test. A um, the cache and cookies are always renewed. There is a way to keep the cache and cookies, but we may have to do another video for that. 
Now let's continue on our test here. So that we're done with our first test case, which is log into Gmail. What we'll do next is once we're logged in, we want to locate that Google Apps button. So we'll go ahead and create another function which represents another test case, which is step one, locate Google Apps button. Once again, it's another self. And this time I'm gonna give it an even longer implicit wait just because it takes a while to load up your Gmail. And then let's go ahead and this is where the dynamic approach starts coming into play. We need to be able to find this button which where the um, IDs are always changing. So it's impossible to do a simple find element by ID on a Gmail page. So we are going to use XPath to find what we're looking for. So grab all page elements equals to self.driver find elements by XPath. And then we're going to here. And this symbolizes everything, all the elements within the page. And then Google Apps button, which is eventually that dynamic button I'm looking for will be found through this for loop that I'm going to do in a minute. So we're setting it to none for now, <clears throat> mainly for error handling. Then let's do our simple for loop in Python. I personally like the range approach. And lin is a function built in like library function of Python which can find how long the length of an array is. If you have questions about how arrays work, just leave me a question. I'll gladly answer your questions about it. So when going through that loop, we are going to set up a temporary variable which will look for the title attribute of an element. So that's the trick to going through dynamic elements on a page like Google. You look for other attributes that are that contain static data like the title or the href or any other attribute of an element that's static data and you know it's going to be static every time. So I'm going to reference this this index here which is part of this I here. And then I'm going to grab an attribute of title. That's what I'm going to look for because I know for sure that title is going to be unique. If title checker equals equals Google apps and that is the title I'm looking for. Then Google app button is equals to grab all page elements at that particular index. And then I'm going to print this out just to say that I understand what's going on. I found the element that I'm looking for. So found Google Apps button. And then this is how you do concatenation. An easy way of doing concatenation in Python is doing the percent %s and then referencing what that percent %s represents, which is Google App button. And I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Then I'm going to return Google App button. Uh, let's see here. Let me make a little configuration change here. Let's make all of this Google Apps button because that's the proper title, right? Now, if there's nothing returned, we're going to return none just as a error handler. Now, once since we've got this test case set up, we're going to call it here in our execute test. Uh, that's acting a little strange. We'll call it here now. And we're going to execute it again. So we're going to see if we can actually find the Google Apps button this time.
Yeah, this is pretty awesome. I actually got this as a request from one of my viewers. He wanted to see how we can do multi-window interactions on Selenium. So I hope this will teach you viewers something new about multi-window interactions with Selenium. Alright, so in this case it did find the button. I probably should have done like a time.sleep just to show you what it looks like because I actually clicked the button. Alright, so continuing on, let's make a little bit of modifications here because what we need to do now is figure out which but which uh let's see here. I'm back tracing here. This is more like an error handling type of thing. So I'm setting a variable this so when it returns I can now check if it exists so I'm not wasting my test time. Could not find Google app button. Exclamation point. All right, but if it's found, what we're going to do now is now create a new variable called Google apps. And this is go getting a little ahead of myself, but we're going to create this test case as well which is step to locate Google Apps button. And then from there, pass in this as my parameter for this. All right. Now we're going to create that test case. Step to locate Google Apps button. And I'm going to call it param apps button. That's what's being passed in here. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of time, another implicit wait. And this will be basically the same thing as this. So I have to do another dynamic approach to finding the buttons. It'll be, but there will be some minor differences. So grab child elements of app button equals param apps button find elements by xpath. And once again, I'm here. Now the difference between this and this is that this one's grabbing all the elements of the whole entire page, whereas this one is grabbing everything as a uh, child of this element of where it's located at the moment. So it would take less time of actually looping through this instead of this one. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and set up our array which will grab all the hrefs from the Google Apps button. For i in range 0, the length of this one here. I'm going to have an href checker I'm referencing the index again and then this time I'm looking for the attribute of href so I can grab all the links and I'm going to do a try and catch statement for this because Sometimes you're going to run through an element that may think it has an href, but it really doesn't. So then it causes your test to fail. So this will actually continue the test, looking for all the hrefs of all the buttons within the Google Apps. So that's like the Google Drive, Google Maps, all the Google Apps within there. So if href checker is not equals to none in href checker index 0 equals h. Most uh, URL addresses contains h for HTTPS or HTTP protocol. That's why I'm looking for that because I want to make sure I find an actual link and make sure that it's not equal to nothing. So if it is, if it meets that condition, so on Google buttons will be appended a new value 
of grab all child elements of app button with index of get attribute of href. If this is confusing, it is okay. You can leave a comment, ask me questions about this. I would be more than happy to answer questions. And once again, just like the first test case, I'm confirming that I found it. Found Google button href. Once again, once again doing another uh, concatenation href checker. And what I'm going to do now is return Google buttons. So then up here, let's see. Yes, it should be here. So now, when I run this test, it will grab all the Google apps that are available for my Google account to use. We're logging in. That's test case number one. Now I'm logging in. Now what I'm going to do next is look for this button here. Should be finding it soon. There you go. And you can see that the Google Apps button has been pressed by Selenium. And you can see on the far right on the screen, I'm grabbing all the URL addresses of all the Google App buttons. <clears throat> And now you see that I've grabbed them all. Now what I can do is create a new test case, which will actually open up new windows, executing a JavaScript uh, syntax that will load up the new href buttons there. <clears throat> so we are going to, let's first update this, because this is what this is doing. Now, test case number three. Step three, open new tabs with Google Apps. Once again, referencing self and then apps, which will be passing in the information from here. So I move the comments just to be a little bit more orderly here. <clears throat> now, in this moment I have all the URL addresses so I want to check first to see if it is greater than zero otherwise I'm wasting my time and now if there is something in there I'm going to do a for loop I can do the length of apps but since there are a bunch of links on there I'm going to do up to five for now just to give you an idea of what will happen Let's go ahead and do a self.driver and then execute script, which is our built in function for Selenium to execute JavaScript. So, window.open with our concatenation there again. And then that will close that. And now I am referencing apps with the index there. And then just do one more implicit wait. Now we're going to update execute test to run this step now with the Google Apps as my parameter. Now this should be the final step to setting up our um, Selenium mini-series of opening multiple windows and being able to do multiple things at the same time. That is what I'm planning to do with future videos of this. So we can do create a document in Google Drive while looking up something on Google Maps. You know, we can do all of these things with Selenium. It's a great tool. So f to finalize, I am going to run this to confirm that my test is working correctly because I that's a practice I love doing I love to make sure that each uh, test case is functioning 
properly and reliably. So test case one appears to be successful. I can log into Gmail. Now what I'm going to do next is have my Selenium click that Google Apps button using the dynamic approach since Gmail has those dynamic attribute values so I have to look for a static value in there somewhere and that works successfully and you can see it reflected on the right hand side of the screen and I'm looking for all the URLs and it looks like that's working as expected as well and then the last piece of the puzzle would be test case 3 which will open up the windows and there you go I just opened up five windows at the same time so there you have it that is how we can set up our selenium to open up multiple windows what I'm planning to do next is do a video video about how to get Google Maps executing commands and also Google Drive creating a document thank you very much I hope you enjoyed this video please comment and subscribe to my channel Thank you very much. Have a great day.